After my first set of college exams in bioengineering, I went into septic shock and cardiac arrest and spent the next 30 days in a coma and another 40 mildly coherent in ICU. I had been a healthy and active 18-year-old, and to say this came as a surprise would be an understatement. But this is not about my journey of overcoming hardships. This is about my ability to view a part of my life I had no memory of through a digital lens. As a gift, my Uncle Randy gathered every Facebook post, comment, text, and tweet from my family and friends' accounts. This compilation of emotion and sentiment gave me some foundational pieces to understanding the lost months of my life. Without these pieces of data, those 70-plus days would be gone. As I woke, I wanted more details, trying to gather medical forms and tests and scans. But somehow, these pieces of information gathered about me were not mine to own. This experience introduced me to the world of data. It's often thought of as zeros and ones, or formally defined as factual information, such as measurements or statistics used as a basis for reasoning, discussion, and calculation. But data is much more than that. It's the intimate and unique details of a story, your story. It's the digital narrative of who you are, where you've been, what you've done, and maybe, with certain insights, an indication of where you will go, what you will do, and even who you might become. Your digital life paints a picture of you, and this data, the story of your life, is more valuable and more in jeopardy than you may realize. When you think of data being at risk, you probably think of the big hacking stories you see on the news. But there's a modern-day hacker that the news often overlooks, and we tend to close our eyes to. These modern-day hackers are technology companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Uber, and they don't actually have to hack us at all. Instead, we use their apps and services for free, and in turn, grant them permission to watch, collect, and sell information about everything we do. Technology companies may market themselves differently, but make no mistake, they are all data collection centers. They sell our activity to advertisers, hedge funds, market researchers, and governments, all without our knowledge or ability to do anything about it. Consider how many apps you have on your phone. If you're like me, you haven't paid to use a single one. Why do you think that is? If you are not paying for a product, you are the product. It doesn't feel like we're paying for these apps because we don't pay in money. We pay in data and it's worth far more than any subscription fee you could pay. Let me give you an example. Spotify made around $3 billion in subscription services in 2017. In contrast, Google, a company we use for free, made $111 billion on top of a $750 billion valuation. Facebook, another company we use for free, made $40 billion on top of a $600 billion valuation. These high valuations exist because not only do they sell our data, but they also use this data to create artificial intelligence tools and virtual assistants, creating more and more revenue streams that you don't get a piece of. Sometimes, even when you do pay for a service, without regulations, they can still make money off of your personal data. How many of you own an Amazon Echo? I bet with that purchase of $99.99 .99 that you didn't realize you also signed 17 contracts and about 94 pages of data they can collect from you. Ever bought 23andMe as a gift for a relative or a friend or yourself? Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Me too. 23andMe sells your genetic data your DNA to pharmaceutical companies for millions of dollars. They take the underlying characteristic and unique code of who you are, despite having paid for their service, and sell you, quite literally, to create drugs that then you have to pay for again. Now, don't get me wrong, these companies are not evil. They are business opportunists who saw a lucrative market in collecting information on people and capitalized on it. In turn, they do provide us with valuable tools for every aspect of our lives, from communication to transportation to banking. 
I can connect with family and friends all across the world. I can navigate any road without trouble. And if I don't want to drive, I can click a button and have someone take my lazy self from point A to point B. <laughs> but while we are gaining value from these companies, we have been lulled into a coma ourselves where we're unconscious of what we've been giving away. It isn't just money and revenue from sales or new technology that makes these companies worth billions of dollars. It's the fact that our data gives power and control to self-interested companies and organizations. In 2016, a company called Cambridge Analytica used Facebook data to build psychological profiles on 50 million users without our permission or knowledge. Many were angry because for the first time in an election cycle here in America, people saw that government administrations could target, persuade, and even manipulate people with political content to see things a certain way, which in its very essence threatened democracy. And here's why. Targeted misleading information is a form of censorship because it threatens your freedom to think and make an informed decision. How can we be expected to make, use our brains to make the best decision possible if the content we see is pushed intentionally to influence or to change it? That's why data is worth so much. It's power. The more data you have, the more insight you have into someone's personality, their decision-making, their lives. The more you can target those people with personalized messages to control what a user may do and may think. Right now, these companies own the future, and profiling you is legal, common, and done every day. But what we must realize is we have the power to transform this current system. You may have noticed your inbox was flooded with updated terms of agreement policies in May of this year. A general data protection regulation, also known as GDPR, came into effect in Europe and therefore affected international companies. GDPR requires companies to tell users what data is being collected and why. And if they want to share that data, it requires clear and active consent. No more pre-check boxes that you can't opt out of. Most importantly, it gives you a right to a copy of the data they've collected on you and a right to tell the company they must delete the data they have on you. Moves towards regulations reveal hope that change can happen. Laws could give us an opportunity for a fresh start in a new system of our creation. You are the product, and since you're the product, these companies don't exist without you. Together, we can erase our digital past and rebuild the future, shifting to companies that value our privacy and forcing data collection companies to change their practices or die out. There are ways you can be proactive about your privacy today. Downloading browsers or plugins that don't track you as you search online, such as Brave or DuckDuckGo, will only take two minutes, but can go a long way in showing we're willing to use our choices to support privacy-centered companies. Here's what our apps and services ecosystem could look like if we scratch the past and demand ownership over our digital future. One you'll see more and more subscription and fee-based models instead of free apps. Just like Netflix and Spotify, you pay a monthly or yearly fee, so companies have the capital they need to function and don't have to sell you. Or you pay a fee per transaction, just as some finance apps allow you to transfer money to friends but charge you a fee or percentage to do so. Two, give and take platforms. New technology allows each of our devices to play a secure role in a decentralized ecosystem, allowing for a combination of different and kind of funky business models. For example, a company called Oyster is a two-way model. On their platform, every time you visit a website, your computer allows others to use the extra storage space on your laptop or device. The website owner would get indirectly paid by people wanting to use that storage. And because the website's paid for, you can browse ad-free and tracking-free. Even further, because people are getting paid based on the duration of your stay on their site, they're incentivized to create credible, in-depth content for engagement versus clickbait headlines for a moment of attention. And the third business model, my personal favorite, 
and perhaps the most ripe with opportunity, is consent-based data platforms, where users give knowledgeable consent to share their data anonymously. Companies sell it, but are required to give you your fair share of the proceeds. We're no longer just users. We are collaborators and partners with the companies we use. You control what you share and with whom, and you get paid. Maybe you sell your Facebook data or your transaction history to help pay the bills. Maybe advertisers pay you for your time and attention instead of a third-party app to grab your data. To some, it's not easy to picture what owning your data could look like. But imagine if I had all of my medical history secured and encrypted on my phone. Imagine if I and other survivors of septic shock could share that data anonymously with sincere medical researchers aggregated and anonymous, giving accurate insights and information. What diseases could we cure? What medical mysteries could we solve? Imagine a world where you own this data, your data. You could choose to keep it private, or you could sell it with others for a profit. And what if that profit paid for your groceries, the electric bill, or your health care itself? Together, we can create a universal basic income from the data we generate every day and get paid for simply being ourselves. Just think, if you gave companies permission to sell you ads directly, and for every $1 of revenue they make, maybe you get 20 30%, or instead of Google selling your search history as what you intend to do or to buy, you had a way to ping, I need a new car and let dealerships advertise directly to you and use their marketing budget to pay you or give you a discount. And ping, car purchased, I don't get ads for weeks after I've already purchased an item. Transforming to this new system will take research and innovation, but instead of companies having power over you, it's time they realize the greater power for real change when working with you. We deserve to control our digital life and our physical future. We are the product. And now that we are aware, it's time we own it. Thank you.